Hey, welcome to my workshop. I'm Mark, and today we're going to be building a wind turbine from buying everything off of the internet. We're going to start with the motor out of a treadmill, and it is a permanent magnet motor, and it also acts as a generator. And you can see I can spin it by hand, and I'm getting over four volts. The problem with using a uh, treadmill motor and trying to hook the blades directly to the flywheel is that it will spin clockwise, which unscrews this flywheel. And uh, we also, uh, I tried also to, starting with using PVC blades, and I uh, actually bought these off a guy from the internet, and I'm uh, very disappointed in them. They're really flimsy. They warp in the sun, and uh, they're just not going to, they're going to fatigue over time, and I've actually seen videos of them where they're flying off the windmill, and I really think they're dangerous, so I'm not going to go that way. Um, so what we're going to do is remove the flywheel. You see it spins clockwise, which will cause it to unscrew. And then you will always be battling this. We're going to use a different system. But start with, we're going to start with the tail boom. And the tail boom, on one end the motor will hook, the generator. On the other end will be the vane. And this will have to pivot and that pivot point is called the yaw axis. And it will pivot and face always face the wind. So we have to build this assembly. And what I came up with is an inch and a half, <clears throat> an inch and a half pipe. And I took and filed the little weld in there smooth. And I got an inch and a quarter threaded nipple and screwed on a, a, a hub, a flange but it doesn't quite fit down inside there. I, I might did and I found that I have to shave 65 thousandths of an inch off of it. So let's go chuck this up in the lathe and get it turned down. Makes a great bearing. Also your, your yaw axis has to be hollow so that your wires can go down through the middle. And also as it turns, it may turn more clockwise than it does counterclockwise through the years and to keep your wires from getting twisted you've got to put in a slip ring and a slip ring is basically some brushes and it allows the wind turbine to spin around without your wires getting twisted it's a neat little device again you can buy all these off of the internet I got this treadmill motor off eBay for about 40 bucks um, most of the parts that I am buying um, the blades and the hub I have gotten from windynation.com they've been supplying me with the hard to find stuff sell the uh, tail boom as well so let's get this laid out I know that the length of my motor is around 9 inches so we want to move back from there and we'll take lay out the holes I need to drill two holes to mount it and one big enough for this to come up through. And I've got those already marked and we'll just transfer those marks over. And you want your axes to be past the motor so that you don't get in the way of all the wiring and the weight of it. You want it roughly balanced uh, after all said and done. So let's get this over to the lathe I mean over to the uh, drill press and get these holes drilled. And we drill the last hole for the blocking diode. I'm going to take a file and touch these up. These edges are sharp and we'll be ready to start assembling. You can see that all this will spin inside of here like so and yet your wire here is totally free 
So this won't spin and the rest of it will. You won't twist your wires up. Now it can pivot, put a little grease on it and pivot in the wind. The blades I bought are made out of aircraft aluminum, got them from windynation.com. They're strong, they're stiff, they're perfectly balanced. Again, I don't recommend PVC. Um, it has the uh, airfoil design where it actually works on the lift. As the wind goes by, it creates a vacuum on the back side of the blade which sucks the blade around. You're only harvesting about 59% of the wind. The other 41% has to go by in order for it to work and to be efficient. Otherwise, the air just builds up in front of the windmill and you start getting inefficiencies. Um, also, a uh, three-blade design is, is, best I can tell, the most efficient. You start getting more blades and all you're doing is it's slowing the air down in front of the windmill and it, and it loses efficiency. So I recommend the three-blade design. And uh, the length of your blade is a lot determined on the amount of wind you have. Um, these blades are designed for low wind. Uh, where this is going to be installed at, they have uh, a gentle breeze all day long, but not a hard wind. Um, so this is the design we went with. So in order to get this to hook up, this little hub, I bought windynation.com and it bolts on real simple and then it will fit into the shaft. But these threads are in the way so we got to take this over to the bandsaw, cut that off and then we'll hook that on there. Cut these off with a hacksaw and don't have a bandsaw. Alright, we've got our generator hooked on here. I just used a couple of stainless steel hose clamps and we're going to add one more here in a minute with a housing to, to cover all this. Uh, our next step is to install a blocking diode. A blocking diode is simply a one-way valve. Electricity will only flow one way. And you have to put one of these in there because when you hook this the batteries, you're charging batteries, you don't want the the batteries to run this like a motor and you got this big massive fan draining your batteries. So what we've done, we drilled a hole in and uh, we're going to take the negative side and hook to it and I've cut the wire about an inch, two inches longer than we need and we'll crimp on this little electrical connection. Like so pull on it make sure it's good and we'll slip that in on the back side here and tighten that up with our match. Now we want to hook we want to hook our lead coming out of our swivel and this is designed for a three phase so I'm going to um, take advantage of, I'm going to go ahead and hook two of them together for the positive and one for the negative and I'm actually going to use the ground and the yaw axis will also be part of the electrical connection as well as the slip ring on the negative side only. So we need to hook this in to here like so. Let me cut and crimp that off and put a slip on. By doing it this way, I increase the ampacity of this little slip ring. slide 
have that on. And that will plug in like so. And next we'll do the positive the same way. Cut these off a couple of inches longer than I need. Strip these out and do the same thing. And I'm using the connectors like this where they male female plug in. In case this thing wears out in a few years, I can simply buy another one off eBay or have a spare ready and and not have to remake the whole thing. Alright, <clears throat> the next step is we're gonna put a, a nacelle on. It's simply a cover. I just made this out of some old roofing material I had. Galvanized tin. And it will keep the water, snow and ice out. good to go we'll, <clears throat> we'll hook the fan on the blades on next and this is a little hub uh, arbor that I bought from Windy Nation it has three set screws in it and it just slips on and will clamp down to the shaft but I'm going to take and grind a little flat spot for one of them to sit on just to ensure that it doesn't slip wind's going to come in and hit the blade and create a vacuum on this side that will suck the blade around so it spins clockwise. Alright, the next step is to put the, the vane on. When I've got the holes drilled, I need to get matching holes. I'll just use a piece of galvanized sheet metal got it at the local hardware store. And uh, we'll drill matching holes and uh, put some stainless steel screws to hold them in place. <laughs> All right, now we got the tail boom on here and tightened up. I mean the vein on the end of the tail boom. And we're ready to go mount this on a pole. I've got a inch and a half pipe that we're gonna weld on to another piece of angle. And then that angle will have holes oh, no. drilled in it where it can bolt okay, into a post. Okay. All right, now we're ready to mount it. Um, this is the, the top of our bearing. I got the little engine app pipe welded to a piece of two and a half inch angle iron. It's about 40 inches long. I got holes drilled in it where this can mount to a post or a beam and you can mount it however high you want. And this will set in on top. <clears throat> like so. The final assembly will put a little grease on it and you can see how it will face the wind. And our electrical connections are here, and they'll simply run down the side, and you can see it spinning, and we're done. And that's the end of the project. Uh, again, we sell the tail boom, the yaw axe is uh, bearing, as well as this beam, mountain beam. If you got any questions, feel free to contact us. And our website is affordablesolarframes.com. Thanks for watching.